Today, we are going to be answering questions from Instagram for our Q&A. If you like this, go to my channel and watch the other half. What are the biggest differences competing oh. at the junior level, national like level, and pro level shows? Physique judging wise, competition wise, what changes do you have to make continually to be successful to move up in the sport? So this is pretty cool because you just went yeah. from an amateur to a pro yeah. to a pro to mm -hmm. a pro champion. Yeah. So you've literally climbed from the bottom to the top. Now we here. Now we here. <laughs> so tell me what the biggest difference was between Start when you thought up. about earning a pro card and competing as a pro. So the biggest difference that I notice between, or that exists, not that I just noticed, is your level of leanness and your stage presence. Um, so... Quarter turn. Quarter turn. To po the right. Posing. Posing. Stage presence, hair, so, makeup. Yes. Poise. So on the amateur level, you can get by with Generally, you can still do well with a bit higher body fat percentage. Once you get to a pro level, you're competing against pros. So on the pro stage, you have to be, as probably to win, have to be the leanest up there. Um, and well, and symmetry also comes into play, but level of leanness is definitely going yeah. to be um, more important as you get on the pro stage because you're competing against other pros. They're looking for that really uh, Polished. elite, yep. uh, basically conditioning level so it's not going to be like oh yeah i'm holding a bit of water no it's just that you have more body fat to lose um <laughs> so common. yeah so definitely body fat level so i was much leaner competing as a pro than i was as, as an amateur and then also stage presence so in the amateur level obviously you're competing against a lot of people who maybe this is like their first show or first couple of shows but once you get to the pro level they're looking for it's not just your physique it's how you present your physique so you're posing so each person your posing routine or if you're a, a male bodybuilder um, for figure your individual so you have to do an individual presentation um, they're looking for someone who will represent the organization well so they don't want um, someone to get up there in their heels and be clunking around obviously that's not demonstrating a level of class a level of uh, dedication to your posing so so it's really about the full package and and so posing definitely comes into play and you need to make sure you're practicing that making sure you're practicing your presentation and two posing is definitely a type of conditioning so um, on the pro stage you are going to be holding poses up to a minute um, each so it is no joke you're not just holding it there for three seconds and then quarter turn it is it's a battle so if you're shaking up there on stage and you're falling over you the judges are gonna I mean First of all, it, it's that's you're going to be taken down in your in your score, but also they're not going to be able to see your physique as well if you're shaking and moving and whatever. So yeah, so level of leanness, posing, presentation, and the small details definitely add up. Yeah. So one thing I'll say about um, competing as an amateur versus a pro, mm -hmm. judges are usually competitors. Yes. And competitors respect conditioning, yeah. stage presence. If you love what you're doing and you get up there and you display a physique that you're that the, the they can tell that you've taken a lot of pride in and that this is something that you love, it's just something that is noticed by the judges. Yeah. And and when you have that physique and you put in the work, you're going to be more confident on stage. Yeah. That's going to come across Confidence more naturally. Is big. Yeah. So the biggest difference, like Katie said, at the amateur level, you can get a little bit way a little bit more usually with genetic structure mm -hmm. things like yeah. that. But when you get to the pro level, no matter what organization it is, right. IFBB, uh, you know, right. WNBF, OCB, whatever it is, you're going to find that everyone that's there was an overall champion. Yeah. So they either already had great structure, great right. genetics, got shredded. Then they went, okay, now I'm competing against the pros. Let's yeah. take some time yeah. and bring up whatever we need to bring up. So you're getting the best of the best that have been at this for right. a couple of years. Right. And then for for like bodybuilders, the best natural bodybuilders in the world are tend to be in their late 30s, early yeah. 40s. From Kristen, how often and, okay, how often and what do you do for shoulder works? Well, so I do shoulders three times per week right now, and what do I do? Shoulder press, lateral raise, front raise, basics, rear delt pulls, nothing fancy, just just train often, train them hard. 
Yep. Find the movement that feels good when you do it. You feel the shoulder being uh, used and get really good at that movement and build up volume through that yeah. movement. That's yeah. really the basics. Yeah. All right. Where do you see yourself in three to five years in your fitness journey? Goals in fitness. Will you even be 30 in three to five years? What are you, 25? In five years, I will be 31. Good gravy. <laughs> Goals in fitness. If you never found your way into fitness, what do you think you'd be doing and why? So, to answer the first one, where do I see myself in three to five years? To be honest, um, I, I don't tend to project where I'm gonna be yeah, in three to five one. years because like, three to five years ago, I would have told you something completely different. So I, yeah. have, <laughs> so I have the philosophy of taking it day by day and just seeing where I'm led in life. Um, I, I don't believe in chance. So I think that there is a, a plan for my future and I am just gonna try the hardest at every opportunity that's placed in front of me and see where that takes me. Yeah, I think three to five years uh, for myself. I'll still yeah. be probably doing similar things. Yeah. The biggest thing with, um, like Katie and I like love fitness. If, yeah. if tomorrow competitions went away, there was no powerlifting competitions, there was no bodybuilding competitions, we would still come in the gym and train every right. day. We would have fun with it and enjoy right. it. It's just part of who we are. Um, we don't lift to be competitors. We compete as an extension of something we already love to do. So right. in three to five years, I'm still gonna be lifting. Mm -hmm. But who's to say there's not gonna be some new sport that comes out that we're like, oh, right. that's awesome. Right. I've seen some of my clients, uh, one of my clients right now is, try is getting ready for American Ninja Warrior training. Oh. Like, yeah, so um, that's something that didn't exist five years ago. Yeah. So if you asked her, like, what are you gonna be doing in right. five years? She wouldn't have said that. Right. You know, CrossFit didn't exist 10 years ago, maybe. I don't know the- Five years ago, I never would have said powerlifting. Powerlifting, that's you know what I'm saying. So, and then yeah. like, even within our own physique sport, now there are so many divisions with bikini and figure and women's physique and men's physique and classic physique and bodybuilding. So even myself, Five years ago, I would have said, no, I'm gonna be doing bodybuilding shows. Well, this year, I wanna do classic physique. Right. Physique. I wanna try it all out, I wanna have fun with it. Hey, maybe I'll be on the bikini stage. Look, look who knows, maybe she's yeah. gonna be women's physique, who knows, <laughs> you never know. Like, yeah. So, yeah. do what you love yeah. and just find ways to make that an extension. Yeah, right. and I think too, if you project too far out in the future, a lot of times you get lost in that. And I mean, it's good to have goals. It's good to set goals for the year and, and yeah. have like a certain, maybe things that you're working towards. But, um, but I think if you, just like living in the past, it doesn't help today and living too far in the future doesn't really help today either. Yeah. So make a plan for today to make tomorrow better I think than you today. and I can both agree. We definitely want to like grow our business, yeah. grow our brand, right. learn more, be yeah. around people that know more than us or stronger right. than us, improve in all aspects of life. But there's not like a specific like way that you intend to do that, you know, like right. it's just to be, about Right. To be honest, like finding opportunities and accepting them. Right. And and growing like my brand and growing my reach is really to make a bigger difference. I yeah, want to like absolutely. reach more people and and make a bigger difference in whatever way I can. And so wherever whatever I'm led to that helps that and and touch people's lives because that means more to me, me than anything if someone says oh my gosh you impacted my life i'm like <gasps> what was the second part of that oh question God. if you never found it your way into fitness what do you think you would be doing and why i'll i'll, I'll finish with this one because probably the last question maybe yeah. one more yeah. um had i never found my way into fitness i would still be doing something athletic yeah. i've always since the moment i remember was on a field with a ball, on a court with a ball. Um, when I found out about the weight room, that became an obsession, but I was still playing volleyball, baseball, basketball, tennis, whatever I could do. I would be doing something athletic. I don't know. Maybe yeah. I would be doing uh, Spartan races or you know something. Yeah. So if it, I don't know if that's what you mean by yeah. what would you be doing if you weren't doing something fitness related. Even yeah. when I had a nine to five job, I went home, changed, and went and did something. Right. I Same. played in softball leagues, basketball yeah. leagues, volleyball leagues. Yeah, I you know? still did fitness. And when even. I found out about bodybuilding shows, I gave all that up and started just doing yeah. bodybuilding. So yeah. it would be something movement related. Yeah. I have, and I, I would, have the urge to move. Yeah, me too. Right. And I would say the same thing. Well, that was an easy one. So let's do one more. Okay, this is a good one to end on. Okay. Because it's a hot topic right now because people are commenting on your weight on your Instagram. Oh, so, yeah. So. <laughs> What's your rate of weight gain you typically allow on a reverse diet for a client who would like to lean bulk while keeping as much fat off as possible? Much love. Myopatrick. Hmm. It depends on each person. 
Good it's so d dependent on each individual, how, what your body weight is, if you're a male, if you're a female, if you're your mental state after a show, your future plans for competition. If you're competing again, like let's say you compete in the fall and then you want to compete again in the spring, then your weight of body re or your body fat regain will be a lot more conservative than someone who maybe wants to take three to four years off. Um, so. If you want to. Yeah, so here's my take on it. You didn't tell me what you do, what your sport is. Right. Did you just lose five pounds because you wanted to look good in board shorts for the summer? Yeah. It very much comes down to the length of the diet, mm -hmm. how much body fat you lost, how much suffering you had to do, okay? Mm -hmm. Two things. One, muscle, very hard to put on. Right. Two, body fat, very easy to put on. So if you're focused on the scale during a reverse diet, going up or staying down, that's not exactly what I focus on. I like stability while performance increases. Right. So, yes, if you've dieted for 24 weeks for a contest, and yes, you need to put on some body fat, 5, 10, 15 pounds, you know, in a short amount of time until you feel good, depending on your goals. However, if you got down to stage weight, didn't have to suffer, and are doing another show in 12 weeks, we do not have the opportunity to reverse aggressively. We need right. to pay attention to things. So, right. it's just a very individual thing. And if you were here and you could tell me exactly what your goal is, hey, I just lost 10 pounds for summer. Right. How do I reverse? I would say very gradually. You, yeah. you probably didn't have to suffer. You probably right. feel great right you now. You probably aren't stage lead. Gradually, um, if you're doing 100 minutes of cardio a week, next week do 80, right. or next week do 70. You know, just gradually walk the cardio down. Maybe start adding in 50 grams of carbs a yeah. day or yeah. you know, something I think, like that. So specifically for me, um, my reverse this year has been different. It's been different every single time. So this year I'm actually up about, even though I'm still lean, I'm up about 10 pounds from my lowest weight. So um, and my, what is it, eight weeks post-show. Um, so for me, it's been just trying to get back to feeling normal. That's almost 10%. You got down to 130, you're up 10 pounds. That's probably seven and a half, eight percent of your body weight. Yeah. That's a nice amount of weight to yeah. be up. Right. And so yeah. I'm still lean, and so, So for you know, me, that would be, if I got down, yeah. let's say I get to 200 for stage weight, that yeah. would mean I got up to 215. Right, so it's percentage nice, yeah. on your weight, or based on what you weigh too, because yeah. obviously Paul weighs significantly more than me, so the amount of weight that he regains yeah. will be more than me. Um, but also too, it depends like, just where you are, how you feel, yeah. um, how are your hormones, how's your like your functionality it's during the day. very much a conversation you have to have with your coach. Right. There's not one size fits individual. all reverse. Yeah. There's the recovery yeah. diet by 3DMJ, but the 3DMJ, it is a reverse diet. They're still yeah. getting you up and then controlling from a certain right. point. Mm -hmm. So yeah, yeah. I very much agree with their philosophy and I have that conversation with everyone yeah. of my clients. Yeah. And it depends too on um, maybe your mental state. So, yeah. and what I mean by that is your relationship with food. Um, because a lot of times certain clients, they can't, it's probably not a good idea to go from tracking, uh, you know, quote unquote poverty macros, contest prep macros to not tracking at all because then you might start binging or like do it, you know. Yeah. So it's really and you can't dependent. intuitively eat when no, your hormones are no, all no, no. changed from contest right. prep. Right. So it's very individual and it depends on what where you are in your yeah. in your life. Well I hope that answered some of your questions guys. Thank you so much for the great questions. Yes. Half the video is gonna be on my channel, half the video is gonna be on Katie. So if you've watched one, we'll put the link in the description box below to the other. Hope you guys have a great day and we'll have more content for you tomorrow. Woo! Oh, tomorrow's the video. How are we gonna check in? We're gonna I, talk we about check-ins. We check in with our coach.